Hey there, YouTube world. My name is Matt Schwartz, and I'm the Welding Geek. On this episode of the Welding Geek, we got another part of the budget build. The gauntlet build! So, if you want to see how I made these, stay tuned to the video. All right, it's time to build some gauntlets. So, this is what I have so far. Okay, I did a test run on these gauntlets, uh, forming-wise. And what I'm gonna attempt to do is I've got these set of uh, 3D printed gauntlets that I got from a buddy that are, are somewhat simple but look really good. So I'm not gonna make an exact replica of these, but I think with Sintra, I can do some stack ups and get some cool features in these gauntlets to make them look really nice. So where we're gonna start is, I've got my other gauntlet here in the flat, two pieces. Now these are, I have these templates available up on my Patreon page for this style gauntlet here. And I'm gonna show you guys the, uh, how to form these, how I got from this to this here. Um, if you want to see how I cut these out, uh, head on back to my first video on the budget build, uh, chapter one, and you will see how to cut these out either with, uh, with a handsaw, if you don't have access to a bandsaw and whatnot, and kind of how to sand these and get them prepped for forming. So, since I've already shown you guys how to do that, I'm going to show you how I form these. It's a pain in the butt. Uh, this is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. There's some gollywoggles and whoops in it, but we'll use those as damage, but they fit pretty well. And I think they're gonna make a great gauntlet once we're done. So, I'm going to attempt to get this from that, again. <laughs> so let me kinda get started. Now what I'm using is a I believe this is a three inch PVC pipe and a two inch PVC pipe as my forms. And this just takes a lot of time and a lot of work back and forth, back and forth, and using the table, using what you can. It's not very easy, uh, but I, I, I think you can get it figured out. So first thing I'm gonna do is heat the middle of this and get my first bend, getting it to go in the right direction here. This is the inside of the PVC board. All right, we kind of got our first bend down here. This is probably going to change as we get a little forward, but we got our first bends in here. The next thing I'm gonna do is heat up these sides, do them one at a time. And I'm actually gonna take this pipe, you'll see here, and press it flat against the table and rotate this up around this tube so I can keep this edge straight. I found out in this one, pressing it down around it, this one edge, got all sloppy so i'm gonna do attempt to do that again here Now that we have this kind of almost bent all the way around, these are gonna to be too tight. So I'm gonna go in here on the top side now again and try to flatten it out a little bit on the table. This is gonna do a couple things. It's gonna give us a little wider shape that we want. And it's also gonna line these edges up parallel when we C-clamp or in, to get them to, 
I don't know what you call this. So they line up. We want these to be reasonably close. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I also kind of have a kind of a sharper bend right here. I'm gonna get rid of that first. flattened out the radius is there. I'm gonna work on the other one. This is actually the top. I don't know why I keep on putting it on the bottom. Uh, but I'm gonna try to get them match up as best I can here. This is actually looking pretty close. So I'm gonna do that to this bottom one. All right, I really like the front of this one, but I really hate the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and do what I did again. Heat up this top section against the table. Kind of forcing it down with my hand, flattening it, flattening it out to the best of my ability, and we'll try to get these two made up closer than that right there. All right, now that I have these somewhat close to fitting together here, I'm gonna sand the edges to make sure they're flat and how I'm gonna do that, as you can kind of see already, I started doing this just to test it out. As I stuck two of my DA paper to my cutting mat and I'm just gonna run it like this. So let me show you how to do that. nice and flat on each other. I'm gonna have to do some fine help and fine tuning and then get everything sanded into place. These aren't gonna be the perfectly smoothest gauntlets ever but they're gonna work pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the fine tuning. It's just gonna be working it back and forth with everything you just saw and get these kind of put together. All right time to get some fine tuning done. Got my edges flattened out how I want them. Now it's Time to try to get them to line up here. And I pick the best side that I feel like is gonna go the flattest and then we're gonna adjust this side. So we're gonna tape this side together like so. So we got that seam taped together so it's nice and fl flush. But you can see here the misalignment of these edges. I'm just going to try to heat up this section here, use my tubes, and try to get these to line up correctly. I didn't even have to use the tube. I just pressed it flat against the table and now it's lining up pretty well. I actually like that a lot. Uh, these little overhangs and stuff like that, I'm gonna sand them flat and get everything nice and even. So yeah, I'm gonna do that to my other four corners because I still need to do it to this other set and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, I got my stuff all flattened out, all squared up. Then I went ahead and got my my ends squared and sanded. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually take, just take a pen and label this one A. And A. Just so I know these two halves go together. So I'm gonna be taking these apart and we're gonna concentrate on building up on the top to make it look cool. So yeah, make sure you label your things because I guarantee these two ends are not going to match up like from one thing to another. Uh, how you're going to straighten, I straighten these up on my bandsaw. How you can straighten them up is doing the same thing here. So I cut mine and then using the flat surface 
they get these nice and flat. Uh, so they're pretty close. The templates are pretty close. If you form them close, you won't have a whole lot of cutting you needed to do. I wanted to shorten mine slightly so they're more on par with the length of these. So, yep. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to take these apart and then we're going to start working on the top section. All right, so I was prepping to get ready to start putting my top section on and kind of realized that if I, I'm going to cut out a piece, not exactly this size, but if I do this and want to glue it on the top, there's going to be some pretty significant gaps to fill, um, which I plan on filling either with Bondo or silicone. I haven't decided which route I'm going to go. I think it's going to depend on how big they are. So what I did is I went ahead and flattened out the top of one of my gauntlets to make that gap more flat so I could stack something on top get a good contact patch with the glue and that way we can make something similar to the system that's on the top of here. So I'm going to show you how I went about doing that right now. More or less tape my gauntlet together and heat it the center section here and just pressed it flat down on the table as squarely as possible and holding on to my middle edges so my alignment doesn't get messed up on my gauntlet here which that one kind of slightly got off I might have to do some tweaks on it some sweat side tweaks like we did on the last one BAM flat top gauntlet now I went until it was almost melted you know like you really want to put a bunch of heat into this so you can almost squish it right push it down and now we should have plenty of room and a decent patch contact patch for when we glue when we go cut out the Sintra down on there all right I am going to start cutting out my layers of Sintra uh, for this top layer now these won't these parts won't be available as templates I'm more or less gonna just put do something random kind of in this general shape I'm probably gonna do one layer that tapers similar to this this bottom layer and then I'll probably do another layer about yay long and then I cut out this little piece of wood like so and I'm gonna use that to when I get these cut out to do an impression up front here and then I'll probably I bought these things here, speaker wire pins. Okay, and I'm gonna strip the plastics off these and try to infuse these into the Sintra to be my little rock. It's kind of similar to something like that. So that's kind of the direction I'm going. Do I, I don't know if it's gonna turn out or not, but I'm gonna start cutting stuff out on the Sintra board. Now I have a, if this is the first video you're seeing of mine, if you go back through my videos, I've got a, a PVC, Chapter 1 PVC board, the, the armor build, and you can see how I cut the armor in that video. I'm going to try something different this time. I saw in the comments that you can score the Sintra and snap it. I'm going to give that a try since these are, should be all straight lines. I don't think that will work very well for all your curves or for getting the most out of a sheet. But for something like this, I think that will work perfect. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to measure out that and make something similar that will fit on the top of my gauntlets. All right, before I uh, press my tapers in here, I'm gonna put in my little front indent first. So when I uh, cut my lines, it's just gonna be, I'm hoping it'll be easier to do it. And I'm worried that if I do this after I cut those lines in, the edges might roll funky. So I'm gonna put my indents in now. And 
that's what I was going for. Just a cool little indent in there. And now I'm gonna taper, cut and cut a taper on these edges. So you can kind of get an idea of where I'm going here. So now I'm going to stack another layer up here, about yay long. And then we're going to take it to the sander and bevel all these edges around. And then we'll glue it down and we'll start detailing this out with some finer details. All right, I just cut a couple squares like so. I think I'm going to glue these together first. Then I'm going to get these glued, get these glued together, get them sanded, at least this face so it's nice and flush get these glued down to here and then get the rest of this sanded and honed and see what we can come up with to make it look like look cool and then i think i'm going to take my little speaker pins i'm actually going to heat that up and see if i can't drive it into there and have four little things sticking here and then we'll put some finer details in there to make it look a little more complicated so let me get this kind of honed in, glued up. All right, I got my two little pieces glued together. I'm gonna show you how, what, how I glued these. Honestly, I don't think I've explained. I'm just using PVC primer, PVC cement to glue this stuff together. Especially stuff that I know I can clamp down nice and straight. Uh, the other places where I can't do that, I'm using super glue stuff works really well so you more or less just prime this stuff can be a little squirrely liquidy and like to slide all over so just be aware of that make sure you get it clamped down where you want it all right, I'm gonna let that sit for like 10 minutes or so. Once that bonds, I'm gonna go ahead and straighten everything out with sanding, bevel my edges, make it look pretty, and then we'll start detailing it out, and then we will get it bonded onto here. So that will be the next step. I'm just gotta let this set up. All right, we are all glued up. Nice So that glue works pretty well. So I'm gonna get this all sanded. Go do that in the garage. Probably chamfer each edge. Nice. Maybe put a little chamfer on the back edge. Not sure yet. Um, and I'll come and share what I went and then we'll start detailing this thing out. So I'll be back in a minute. All right. This is where we are at here. Got this whole chamfer down. Cleaned up. Kind of radius these edges over so the next thing i think i'm going to do before i start really kind of detailing this thing out is get this bonded onto here like so so i'm going to do the same thing i just did with pvc glue get this clamped down and then we're going to really start getting artistic with this thing and see where we can go I already showed you how to do the gluing, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this off camera. And then I'll be back here in 10 to 15 minutes, and we'll start decking this thing out. All right, it's details time. So I've got my thing taken off here, so it'll be nice and flat. So I've got a couple sharpened stainless tubes here. One with the big radius, one with the small radius. And I'm gonna heat up the ends of these and kind of press them in to make buttons. I've got, like I said, my stereo thingies that I'm gonna try to heat up and plunge in and hopefully I can get them semi-symmetrical. And then I've got my soldering iron over here where I'm actually gonna try to draw in some lines similar to like this, this box here. Just put in some lines, maybe some down here on the bottom. 
just to give it some more detail. I don't have an exact plan, so I'm just gonna kind of wing it, so you can kind of watch as I go through this in my brain. got some details on there just a, just a little bit just enough to kind of paint that little box in there I know it's hard to see with the white we'll get it primed you see the little buttons I put in little gold bl blaster bolt things whatever you whatever our magic can come up with all right so the next thing I'm gonna do before I call it quits on this is I'm gonna I think I'm going to use the silicone and silicone these edges instead of Bondo. I was originally thinking Bondo, but I think I like how the shoulders came out with that. So I think I'm going to hit these edges with some silicone and then we'll get a, a coat of primer on it and then we'll paint these in the paint video. So that's what I'm going to do next get this, get the silicone and put it on here and see what we can come up with. All right, for this I'm using silicone ultra aluminum color. See how this goes. All right, ain't too bad. Fill in that little gap and we paint it. it. Should look pretty close to being a one piece. So, we'll go ahead and prime this so we can get our final view. And we'll see where we go from there. I, I don't know if I'm gonna do, yeah. I don't think that's our final step. We got a little more to go, but we're getting close. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is attach my halves. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna lay up. I've got some elastic. And I'm gonna cut this the same length as this. And this elastic is gonna be my hinge. I'm just using this, I've used, I believe in this one, I used uh, Velcro on this side. And then I glue in a little bit of elastic on here so it's like a clamshell. So this is what I'm trying to attempt to do. So I'm gonna glue this, because this has no stretch this way. It only has stretch this way, right? So I'm gonna use this, cut a piece to length, and then E6000 glue this on one side, a hinge side. And then on the other side, when this side sets up, I'm gonna cut a piece this way and glue it so it's kind of 
yeah, just in there so it will pull it back closed. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm hoping, like I said, I did this on this one, that this will be my hinge point. Uh, you want to make sure you touch all of that uh, Velcro in there. Velcro or, I, like I said, I used elastic. Um, and just press it flat and then we're just going to let this sit for a little while. Actually, you know what? This is sitting pretty decent. I think I'm going to go ahead and put in my other per, uh, part two while I'm at it. I was thinking I might have to let that sit, but this is sitting down pretty nice. So I'm going to do the other side too. All right, I'm hoping that will work with the elastic. It might not, maybe the trick was using Velcro as the hinge point, but I didn't have any, so I went or with the elastic. I'm getting them mixed up. Anyway, I'm gonna let that sit. Hopefully that will work. And then, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll come back when it's all painted. I'm doing a painting video the same time I'm doing this, and I'll probably get that painted in and I'll show you guys that at the end of the video. That's what I'll do. All right. Looks like the hinge in this worked out pretty well. Gives me enough room to stretch to get my arm in there. It seems to be holding up pretty tight. So we can spread that out, get my hand through there. And boom. Got enough play. And this is a very, this is a pretty strong, uh, seam so I'm pretty happy with how that came out so you can either use uh, elastic for this the hit what we'll call the hinge or I like I said on this other one I use velcro and it seems to work really well you just need to make sure that you leave enough uh, non glued section on the elastic on the stretch side to give you some room to flex so you're gonna glue maybe an inch of this side here with the E6000 and an inch here. And make sure you prep your PVC. Just give it a little sand to give it some, and clean it off and give it something to stick to. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get this painted up. You guys have already seen. Like you see, I'm in process. I'm doing both of these videos simultaneously. But you'll see this in the paint video which is gonna go on YouTube before the gauntlet video. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this painted up. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So yeah, pretty. Si I mean, I know it's a sleek, simple looking gauntlet, but that's what I wanted. Uh, you can go as crazy as you want with these things. You could build it up, make it huge, put flamethrowers off the side and do a lot of cool stuff. But I wanted simple and sleek, kind of like these are um, from the Mandalorian. Um, so I really like that look. So that's kind of what I was attempting to do. So I'm gonna get this painted up, get some details on it with the paints. And I'll be back to show you what that looks like after yeah, I get all this stuff taken care of. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a gauntlet video. I hope this video is going to help you guys create your own Mando build. Uh, being able to do it out of Sintra or metal or whatever other materials you can come up with. Um, and I hope this video will help you get that accomplished. Um, I'm really happy with how these came out. Low profile, simple gauntlet build. Um, but they're going to look great with this armor set here. Um, so I'm really happy with how these came out. And I'm hoping you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, what do we have coming up next? We've got a knees build. So I'm going to cut together the video, which would be similar to this one on knees. Um, these are made out of Sintra. And I also uh, backed them in fiberglass. So you'll see how I went about making these. Um, I think after the knees, once my material ever comes in the mail, I'm going to make a blaster video. Because I'm trying to get all my Sintra stuff, all my hard parts built and done so I can kind of clean all my space out <laughs> and get ready for soft parts. Um, so once I'm done with the hard parts, it be soft parts. It's a different thing, so I want to make sure I can get the tools and the mess cleaned up out of here um, and then get my sewing machines and all that stuff around this area 
Anyway, so the soft parts will come after the blasters. Uh, what else do we got? Um, yeah, how can you support me? How about that? Um, subscribing to my channel would be awesome if you guys are enjoying the content. Subscribe, um, throw a like and a comment on a video, which will get my, the algorithm working for me. Um, and it will just get my name out there and my channel will start growing. And it will only grow if you guys join in if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you so much. Um, I'm seeing those people commenting and uh, subscribe, all the subscriptions and all that stuff. Thank you guys so much for growing my channel. It means a ton. It means I can keep on going and making cool stuff for you guys. Uh, I have a Patreon account um, where all my templates for all my builds are available. Um, there's a $5 tier and you can get access to all the templates like for this build. Um, for Din Armor, if you want to make some Din Djarin Armor, there's all the templates for that. Uh, Boba Fett armor. And I got my bo -Katan helmet back there. Boba Fett's helmet. All those templates have already been done. So if you're interested in trying to make something for yourself, you can try to use my templates and it's over there at Patreon. Or if you just want to support me, um, that's the way to do it. Um, that's been a, actually a main source of funding my builds. Um, and on that note, funding my builds, um, one of the biggest questions I get is do I do commission work or will I make a set of armor for you? And the answer is unfortunately no. <laughs> I don't have time to do direct commission work um, because that's a, it's a huge under, uh, undergoing or a huge project because you have to get the sizing right. Um, it's drawing new templates. It's going back and forth and it just I don't have the time to do it. So I decided though myself in order to fund some builds to build a set that I already know how to build so I built uh, a set of Din Djarin armor, a partial set of Din Djarin armor, and a partial set of the Boba Fett armor. And those are available over at my Instagram account. So if you're available of those, and I'll kind of, I've got them sitting here on the table, the partial sets. I'll kind of show you what the set includes. Um, so if you want to head over to my Instagram account, if interested, um, before you go over there, these are very expensive. They're not cheap. This is not a budget thing. Uh, metal work is not cheap. So, just be forewarned, uh, my Instagram page, like you see it in my intro, is May the Schwartz Be With You Cosplay. May the Schwartz Be With You Cosplay. <laughs> so you can head over there um, and send me a direct message only if you're interested in the armor. Because um, my, my mailbox will fill up. Um, so, um, yeah, this is what I have available. I've got a partial set of the Boba Fett armor which comes foamed back it gives you the depth like it looks like on the mandalorian you got the damage involved uh it will have the pen studs with a washer and a nut easily mountable and it comes with all the chest chest plates you know collar it comes with the shoulder bells damage and a back and a back plate if you want to see how much these are, you're going to have to head over to my Instagram account. Um, and then the Din Djarin set will come with the five plates. Season one, best car. It comes with chest plate. All aluminum, none of that plastic stuff. We're dealing with aluminum here. We have got a butt plate, damaged. Dings in there, just like in the show. I said hip plates. Hip plates have foam here, but it's cut out so it sits really nice on your hip. Because th these are the one part of my costume that's kind of a pain because I want it to be metal, but yet the ones in the show are obviously uh, urethane or whatever and you can move in them. So that little cup out is actually a pretty big deal. Um, and then the back plate. So this is not a full set of Din armor, but it'll get you some really epic aluminum parts if interested. And so those are available over at my Instagram and may the Schwartz be with you cosplay. And what selling these sets will do will, will allow me to keep on going with my builds. I've got a build that I want to make and I just can't afford it. I mean, it's going to be a big build, but I think it'd be cool something to build. So I kind of, I'm trying to sell couple sets to, to be able to afford to do that and if I don't sell them then hey I got more armor I'll paint them up and have multiple sets so anyway 
I just wanted to make my YouTube people aware of that, people watching my videos. Um, and yeah, like I said, I don't do commission work, but here's your chance to own something that I've made with my own two hands. And anytime I put something up for sale, it's over there at Made the Schwartz Be With You Cosplay on Instagram. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching my videos, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was informative. I hope you can use the tips and tricks here to make some rad armor yourself. And uh, here's for more coming down the road. So let's get at it. <laughs>